And slowly you come to realize it's all as it should be. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته معكم دار كراي كيو 8 and today another episode of the best show on YouTube an hour with simpai we need drum rolls <laughs> next time <laughs> 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 and with our beloved senpai my friend Brian Strokal how are you my friend I'm doing well Aziz it's a good day the weather is finally getting better it's not as cold anymore <laughs> and I'm very happy <laughs> Oh my god, I remember the, the cold days in Morgantown, it's crazy, minus 30, cars free, everything's freezing. Yeah, uh, it's like, ridiculous. here in Kuwait, like, it's the polar negative, like it's freaking mm-hmm. 50 in here and everything is, is melting. <laughs> 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 I never went to a place that has like, you know, mid type of temperature. It's either minus 30 mm-hmm. or 50 <laughs> it's Celsius. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's, let's not dwell too much on trivial matters. Uh, let's, let's talk about what happened at your locals. I'm pretty sure you guys ha- had the pre-release a couple of days ago. So... We actually had uh, two pre-releases, um, which was a lot of fun. Um, it's been it's very difficult. So, so you tend to get the hype around sets tends to come and go when you go from like Sun and Moon uh, Sun and Moon base set, incredible amount of hype. Then you get to uh, Burning Shadows, which was really hype for people for some reason. And then Ultra Prism, extremely hype. But um, this is one of those sets that, pe- that the general public seems to not be as interested in. Um, even still, I saw quite a few uh, Secret Rare trainers get opened. Um, not very many uh, supporter cards, full art supporters. I think I maybe saw like a Bonnie um, I personally opened two Rosmas in my judge packs, which was pretty cool. Nice. Uh, a regular and a uh, rainbow, which that was lovely. And I traded them immediately. <laughs> uh, Gotta get that value, man, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of those cards that, like, we'll, we'll talk about it more when we actually do the set, but Alternate Cross was one of those cards that I really like it in concept, but I look at the more I look at it and I go, hmm, I don't know how you're supposed to work. <laughs> I think it's not supposed to work. That's the, that's its gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's about it. Pre releases and that's it, huh? Yeah, Locals has been pretty slow recently. There's been some, you know, the local events, but there's really nothing. It's it's the unfortunate problem that we're we're currently in a very solved format. It's mm-hmm. your three variants of Zoroark, and really your only two playable ones. And Espeon Garb showing up, and then Buzzwall, and that's basically your format. And nothing really else, nothing else has the consistency to break in, so there's just nothing... It's stale, not attractive format. Yeah. 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 If those are the words to describe it. And... Yeah, I think that's about it. Alright, let's jump to the one regional we had. It's Jakarta, Indonesia Regional, and in front of me, the the top eight, uh, first place by Sam Chen winning Z- Zoroark Lucario GX, second place Zoroark Lucario GX, 
third and fourth by Vika Bolo. Uh, fifth and sixth, uh, uh, fifth place Boswell. Six and seven Zoroax. And eighth place is Fighting Garbador. What? What's Fighting Garbador? All right. What do you think about it? Um, this regional is actually really interesting, not for the decks that were played, but because of Sam Chen himself. Uh, the guy flew the whole way, like yeah, to, to Indonesia. Because and, um, yeah, uh, before you start, before before you, you get to your mm -hmm. point, I'd like to just mention that um, that regional had just 75 players and that's it 75 all right proceed so i was um looking through hey fonte and sam chen put out a statement after he won jakarta and he went to play in jakarta for a very specific reason he was trying to make a point and the point was that it is absolutely unfair that people with the time and money to travel almost automatically get their world's invite. Oh, I see, I see. And he just happened, he happens to be in the position where he was able to take an entire week's vacation and go to Indonesia and win this tournament. Hmm. And it was only because someone, it's because of the way the championship point structure works. It encourages people to who already have their invites to keep playing and keep winning because you wanna be in the top 16 to get to day two. And there is no restrictions on region. So Sam Chan was making a point that he just went and took 200 championship points from Asia Pacific. Yeah. Which is yeah. a region that, in that particular region um, of Southeast Asia, there is not a lot of large tournaments. And this Jakarta region was a big deal because this was the first, you know, tier two event that they had access to. And an American player came in and just took 200 points out of their country. That's more than half of an invite for them. And it's it's a difficult situation. It's there's been a lot of problems with the emphasis on travel since they changed the tournament structure, eliminating state championships or provincial uh, championships as well, and putting more of an emphasis on travel. Uh, and with the introduction of pro players and pro teams, you now have players who can travel as much as they want and have an inherent advantage. And that was what he was trying to point out. And he and, succeeded. <laughs> oh, yeah. 120%. This is just... It's a it's a big deal. And I hope something hap I hope something is done about it. All right. If I think about if I'm if I'm not stretching here, it's a conspiracy. It is absolutely a conspiracy. Yeah, it's, it's between the flight companies, hotels, pro teams, and the Pokemon company. It's a big conspiracy mm -hmm. here. <laughs> now, to be fair, there are conspiracies within commercial airlines. That's a true thing. There, there are definitely. Um, a lot of things going on with that. I think there's also something to be said for increasing uh, event fees for regionals and steadily increasing um, event attendance because everyone is just trying to push and push and push and just accumulate as many points as possible. Hmm. So, yeah. Uh... I think that's a conspiracy for another day. Um, yeah. <laughs> we have to start that show somehow, somewhere. All right. Uh, about the deck stopping, we see two. Uh, we see only one buzzwall in the in, um, 
اور تو باز وول وان باز وول لايك روك اند وان باز وول جاربدور اند فور زور وورك ديكس تو في كابول وات دو يو ثينك اباوت ذس ذس ستراكشر Uh, the Vika Bulu makes a lot of sense because you can choice band for the uh, Lands Judgment for 210. Takes out both Lucario and Zoroark. It's a, it's a solid number. Um, your general problems are with getting things set up, which this list that I'm looking at, this third place list, is just a very consistent setup. It has double Mew from Fates Collide for the... Um, As your Buzzwall uh, counter? Yeah, I think this deck struggles against Buzzwall. Uh, yeah, especially because like if you're not opening up really well, uh, you're going to have a bad time. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Uh, And especially, this is, this is the kind of deck that I honestly think needs to have Triple Bridget. Yep. I, I think you want a really explosive turn one and get as many combo pieces thinned out of your deck as mm-hmm. possible. So you want to maximize your opener of your Bridget. Um, I, it, it could be too. You have so many... There's so many value supporters here. Um, uh, maxed out Ultra Ball, maxed out Rare Candies. So that was the Vikabul. Let's pull up the um, the guy who won actually the event mm-hmm. Sam Chen's deck so we can discuss it a little bit so it's a 4-4 Zoroark lineup with a th- with 3-2 Lucario GX's 1 Mew EX 1 Mew 2 Evolution 1 Rajirak EX. It's interesting. It's a typical, um, how can I say it? Uh, Zoroark build with only yeah. with four strong energies and four DCEs and one Rajirak EX. So all is just special energy deck. It's interesting. What do you think? Um, it seems really good. It's mm-hmm. not, I like this. better than the Lucario decks that try to pick up the Lucario and play it back down and cycle it over turns. Mm-hmm. Um, because really, your plan is to just evolve, attach, knockout. And and that's essentially all that you're looking here to do, is you've got your... Because um, Lucario does 120 when it evolves. Then you have plus 20 from Strong, so 140... Plus a choice band is 170. Red Rock plus 10 is 180. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, 180 for one energy is really good. It's insanely good. It's it's hard to beat. Um, and you got the typical Zoroark consistency additions in the form of a Mallow and a Professor Kukui. So, like, for example, even if you miss the choice band, you can still Professor Kukui into damage or perhaps even... Well, 200 is not a relevant number, um, but you can you can fix things. Yeah, uh, 200 like you can one shot Buzzwall if you want. If you did not have the yeah. new EX, I guess. If you, um, you can also do 170 with Zoroark. Mm-hmm. That too. You can one shot the Tapu Lele, which is which is a big deal. Mm-hmm. All right, now let's talk about the next tournament. which is the Latin America International. Yeah. Attended 600 masters, at almost 600 masters attended that tournament, including the great Thor Dreckliff. Including the great <laughs> Thor Dreckliff. <laughs> All right. All right. We see the top eight, and oh my god, where is he? Where is Thor? There is no Thor directly in the top eight. With all the fake tears in my eyes, I- I'm crying. You see me crying over not Thor not taking the fourth <laughs> international in a row. Tears. Yeah, go die, <laughs> Thor. 
go home. <laughs> that uh, that video that you made <laughs> was one of the funniest things I've seen in a long time. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I was. I, I'm not joking. There were tears. There were tears coming down my face. My, my stomach hurt. It was so funny. Uh, guys, video in the description if you want to know what are we talking about. Yeah, it it, it just it just occurred to me, you know, when I <laughs> when I saw I was I was you know just you know going through my Twitter account and I saw Tord. I'm two, two, and one. The dream is dead, and it came back. Let's do this. Made it. <laughs> oh, it's lagging. Doesn't mean this doesn't mean the conspiracy is over. Uh, can you repeat? Uh, it, it was lagging. Uh, this doesn't mean the conspiracy is over, that it's been disproven. No, no, not by any stretch of imagination. It, it's like, uh, how can I say it? It, it, it? His magical power maybe ran out. His magical battery, he forgot to charge it somehow. Or he gave us a chance. So, he gave us... Yeah. No, no, no. It, he, he, he made us believe that he's a human. Yeah, yes. Exactly. I think the Tord... <laughs> Found out that someone was on to him. Yes, yes, he was watching our stream. <laughs> <laughs> and he thought, oh, they're yeah. gonna catch me. Let's lose. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Todd Reckliff, uh I'm sorry, but <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on. Top eight. We got. One, two, uh, two buzz walls in the t first two spots. Uh, and and uh, uh, wow, it's like the same. It's almost the same. Two buzz mm -hmm. walls, two Vika Bulus, and four Zoroark decks. <laughs> it's the same. It's the same. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? Um, there are, there are some names, so... Azul getting second is not a surprise. I'm I'm of the opinion that Azul Grigo mm -hmm. is the best American player. The best. The best. Um, if you look at just the consistency and how high he is placing, mm -hmm. um, he, he, in my opinion, is the strongest American player. He's the most technically proficient, and he's getting the results. All right, all right. Um, sadly, we don't have any deck list as of now. So if if the deck list came while I was editing the video, I will put it up here somewhere, here, for the Azul. Um, we don't have any Buzzwalls list, but it's another just an Vika Bulu and you know, and it's funny how two Brazilian guys made it to the to the Sao Paulo regionals. <laughs> hey guys, let's win our, our international. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Like, we don't see much. Uh, Latin Americans are, are very strong players. Like, the, 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 the mm -hmm. last world champion was Argentinian, right? If I'm not mistaken. Um, I think so, yeah. Um, but we don't we don't Latin, see much yeah. Latin American players. It's all it's always Europe and America. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. So you do see people like um, Pablo Mesa. Well, he's really more of a Europe guy. Mm -hmm. But I I think it's just because of Brazil because Brazil Brazil has a ton of great players, but they're just not as easily able to travel as people from Europe. Yeah. As uh, yeah, I think that yeah, all parts of the world has like if people want to um, um, you know travel and compete at mu a much higher level stage, but not everyone got the means and the resources to do it. 
So our savior and hero Sam Chen proved that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sam Chen, you are my hero. Alright. And when I saw Xander Piro's name, I got a P- PTSD, you know. It's, it's <laughs> over. Like this, you know. <laughs> and I see him in 11th place. And oh my god, it's Espion Garbador. I was like, oh, thank God. Thank all the gods. Every religion there is. <laughs> it's not Zoro or Clover. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So that's a thing about it. Nothing we, we can talk about in this regional. The, the main topics that we did talk about is Sam Chen and Thor Dreckliff. Not the, not the tournament itself. There is nothing to talk about. It's the same structure over and over and over. But there is one question. Why do you think Vikaburu is topping lately? Um... You'll see its resurgence there. It had a similar resurgence uh, a few months ago with uh, Peter Kika's list and people were taking it and and you'd have like there was like a 2-2 Zoroark in it for consistency purposes and 210 is a really great number to be able to hit in this format. Um, the vast majority of attackers are 210 HP and um, Nothing's really resistant to grass. It's just not a, a common type to see in the format. Plus, Tapu Bulu not having a having weakness is really strong. It actually, in many ways, makes it have a great matchup against a deck that would normally, you know, in any other circumstances, destroy it in, in the form of Ho-Oh. Your Ho-Oh matchup's amazing. Because you just, they power up a Ho-Oh, you build a Bulu and kill their ho and take five energy off the board. Mm-hmm. And without being scared, you know, because you don't have any weakness whatsoever. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially because it's, the first attack is great for softening up um, small Pokemon or anything that's bigger than 210. Um, the, fa- the ability to either discard or not discard your energy, so you you can take the two-hit knockout if you have the tempo to do it. Um, the GX attack to completely heal it of damage and do 180 with a choice band, incredible. Mm-hmm. Tabu Bulu um, is just a great Pokemon all around. It's one of these Pokemon that it's amazingly designed. Yeah, it's it's just such a solid card. I The only thing holding Tapu Bulu back is the lack of grass if if we had tapu bulu back in the format or really ex existed it would be the best deck and nothing could touch it <laughs> awesome awesome all right all right i think that concludes our you know just regular updates now we're gonna talk about uh our new set that will come couple uh, that will be released a couple of days late later, which is Forbidden Light. Forbidden Light comes with a great, amazing cards. Um, it's like Ultra Prism. It comes with a lot of cool, budget, fun decks to play. Like I, I like Ultra Prism and and Forbidden Light not, because they, ha- they they don't have maybe not a great meta relevance but as for for the community it's just a box for the community um forbidden light has a great uh, beast support, ultra beast support so buzzwall will get an insane boost so c- the question here can zoroark compete can it defeat buzzwall after the Forbidden Light support. What do you think? Before you even start with Forbidden Light. This is the question. The question. Mm, I think so. Because. So the Ultra Beast card. So if you're looking at a deck like Lycanroc. Buzzwall. Beast Energy is only one card. 
and you don't really need it. Um, only works when your opponent is at three or four prizes, which is a very tight situation, which means you're not going to play a high count of it. It's not four of, because you're not going to be able to play it as easily as you would a max elixir. Um, Ultra Space is pointless because you have Brooklet Hill, which is a much better card for consistency in the deck. Um, I mean, honestly, the biggest buff to Buzzwool, I think, is Diancy Prism. The Diancy Prism is insanely good. Yeah. Because um, a lot of those other Ultra Beast cards seem to be buffing Naga Natal. Mm hmm. And are really more for that card than for Buzzwall. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Uh, the baby Buzzwall is interesting, but we will go through it later. All right, let's let's start with the set. Um, I I sent you the Poke Beach uh, uh, link so we can move in that order. Starting with the <laughs> with the Alolan Executor. So it's a stage one with 160 HP and it has one attack that says for one grass energy, tropical shake, 20 damage plus this attack does 20 more damage for each type of basic energy card in your discard pile up to five. <laughs> what do you think of this? Why why did they have to cap the damage output? Exactly. My, that's my point. If I put eight basic energy cards in my discard pile, let me have the 160. I think that's only fair. It's just stupid that they they you know had a cap on it. It's already inconsistent because all the ener different energy types you're going to play. Maybe they were afraid of the one grass energy cost. It's 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 not even. No. <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think it's silly. You know, if you could set up knocking out a 90 with an Lowland Executor with the choice band on it for one energy, I think you deserve it. <laughs> like why why does the pokemon company want to take that away i i have no idea maybe it's it's the the thought of maybe uh, um in the late game if we don't if you don't have a cap on this thing it will be insane because it's a one prize at attacker that can reoccur you attach one energy you attack for insane amount of damage i know it's silly but just think about it in their pr stupid perspective, you know? <laughs> I don't know, I, I don't know. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Just <laughs> All right. Um, next one is uh, my favorite card in the set, I think. It's it's uh, Vivalon. Uh, the Vivalon has stage 2 with 130 HP and uh, it has one attack for one grass energy and it says vivid powder 50 damage that's 80 with choice band your opponent active pokemon is now poisoned and asleep um this might be the most grass like this is just the quintessential grass card exactly that's what I, why, why I like it. It's just amazing. It's a stage two, one energy attack, poison, sleep. It's, it's good. It's good. It's good. Combine it with the, with the stadium that the status condition does not go when you evolve. Mm. It's just a, a very <laughs> nice, fun deck to play, I think. It's um, it's a better budget option than I think people will give it credit. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. All right, all right, all right. Let's move on to. All right, we got the Alola Marowak Fire Stage One with a first attack, 
لمبو لمبو Search your deck for up to two basic energy cards. Attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. All right. The next attack, which is we are hyping so much, uh, an attack for just a double colorless, a Lola Circle, twenty damage times. This attack does twenty damage times the number of Pokemon you have in play with a Lola in its name. What do you think about it? This card is sweet. Yes. Yes. Um, so you've got um, Alolan Radicate is actually pretty good. Um, so you have that to work with. I don't think there are any Alolan Pokemon that are basic. You can um, you can use you can use Alolan Ninetales to stall. Yeah, because like the Alolan Pokemon that we have to work with, like Alolan Raichu uh is great you paralyze the opponent and then you have more time to set up you have Alolan Raticate you get more free attacks and and Alolan um, Ninetales to stall yeah I think the Alola deck will be something amazing it's just fun it screams just um fun. and really like I think I think this might be the budget deck of the set because Maybe. you're getting 120 yeah, you're getting 120 for a double colorless. You're cycling two energies out of your deck for free. Uh, just kind of a stage one rush. And it's all one prize attackers with some anti-GX and EX ability mm -hmm. in it. Um, you can play unit energy in this deck. Yay! All the unit energies. <laughs> so... If it if it can play unit energy, I'm on board. So this is this is actually pretty cool. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Next one is the uh, Del Fox. Let's move on to the Del Fox. Uh, stage two, 150 HP. Ability Magic Torch. Once during your turn, you may leave your opponent active bo Pokemon burned. And an attack for two fire, two colorless. 150 damage, discard two energy from this Pokemon. That's a meh. Yeah. Eh, okay. I'd honestly rather play I'd rather play the Salazzle that mm -hmm. burns on evolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'd rather that too. It's just a meh. I'm I'm sad for Delfox. It could have been something better. Well, it's hard to beat the one that let you draw up to six yes that, so. that one that one was insane i like i loved it i loved it i loved it and the one that does damage for each energy in game so it's it's amazing i, I have lost to that online <laughs> it's so weird because like you'll you'll you sit there and it's like they'll never get that combo to work and then they do and they wipe your board and it's so sad <laughs> But the, the thing, the amazing thing about this deck, if you lose against it, you don't rage. It's just fun to lose against. Yeah. <laughs> it's just fun to watch your opponent pull off that amazing Delphox. Delphox never been bad, but this one is really bad. It's not, it's definitely not great. Yeah. All right. Um... Let's, all right, we got the, uh, moving on to the Pyroar, stage one, 120 HP, and an ability. Whenever your opponent plays an item card or a supporter card, prevent all effect of that card done to this Pokemon. All right, that's, that's weird. And one attack he has for a fire and a, and a double colorless, it does 80 damage. If Lysander Labs in play, this attack does 60 more damage. If I'm not mistaken, Lysander Labs is the stadium that makes you, uh, that nullifies every tool in play, right? Yes. So what do you think? What? It's weird. Uh, if Metal Frying Pan dominates the format, then... <laughs> This is really good. <laughs> this is your go-to card, huh? 
Yeah, all right. Um, I think there's a lot of stuff going for this card because the ability is like um, Omega Barrier. Mm. So, like, you can't um, play Enhanced Hammers against this card. You can't uh, target it with a Guzma. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you can play the Guzma, but it doesn't do anything. Yes. So, I think this card may, just may see play. It's it's just, I don't know. It's got a weird, um, it does a weird damage in that it does 140. Um, it's the 170 may... with the choice band. But the laboratory turns off the tool effect. Oh, all right. Yes, yes, yes. So it's just 140. Hmm. Yes, here we have. That's where the problem comes from, is I think Lysander Labs is the thing that's going to hold this card back. Oh. Yeah, it makes sense, I guess. Um, It's weird. Unless you, like, unless you played the card without Lysander's Lab, and then it does 110, which is still not quite what you want. I don't know. I, I think know. this card... It, yeah, I think if if the laboratory stadium had a different effect, it would actually be really good. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Moving on, moving on to the one of the most anticipated cards in the in the set, which is Frogadier and Greninja GX. Frogadier, if you evolve uh, one of your Pokemon. Uh, when you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, put two damage counters on one of your opponent Pokemon. That's Frogadier. So if you evolve him, two damage. Then you got the Greninja GX, which is uh, stage two, 230 HP. Ability Wind Shuriken. When the, uh, <laughs> God, I just, I just, I, for some reason, I remembered Naruto. <laughs> but you know when I saw the wind shuriken, he's now he's using the wind chakra, I guess. <laughs> uh... right. Wind shuriken. When you play this card from your hand to evolve, you may put three damage counters on your opponent Pokemon. So that's like it's like uh, Golbat Crobat in a sense. As uh, first attack, hay slash. For water and a double colorless, you may shuffle 110 and you may shuffle this Pokemon and all card attached to it to the deck. So it, it escapes. Uh, same cost GX attack, Shadow Assassin. Uh, that's a cool name. This attack does 130 damage to one of your opponent benched Pokemon. And there's a note here Greninja GX may not be played from your lap. <laughs> Ah, that's the best thing about this card. Perfect Mundo. All right, what do you think about it? Um, I flip back and forth. Like I've been flipping back and forth on this card for a while, because it sometimes. So on the one hand, if you compare it to Golbat and Crobat that had similar, they were very strong in the format that they were played during. Um, uh, Phantom Forces. And HP numbers have steadily gone up since then. Mm -hmm. So at first I thought, well, if HP is higher, the amount of damage that they do is less effective. But overall damage numbers have gone up as well. Um, plus, there is a very easy way to get the Greninjas back into your hand either via Potown and Acerola or Super Scoop Up. If you wanted to do an old, an older style, evolve Crobat-esque, pick them up, evolve them again, and cycle them, and then have an attacker that's spreading damage like Buzzwool. There's also 
potential their grin itself in possibly like an Alolan Nine Tails GX Greninja spread damage deck mm -hmm. with uh, Aqua Patches. Yeah. Can we see, in theory, like Zoro or Greninja? It's just, Greninja is just to spread the damage so Zoroark can take the KO. So if you think about it, Zoroark damage output plus the, the damage from the abilities, it's enough to KO yeah. everything. Plus mm -hmm. the consistency. I mean, so Zoroark Greninja is maybe, be, maybe a thing. I mean, Zoroark Greninja break was a thing. So if that was a thing, this could definitely be a thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hmm. All right, all right, awesome, awesome. Greninja. All right, moving on. Uh, no, this this is garbage. This is absolute garbage. All right, all right. Uh, Volcanian <laughs> Prism Star, one sixty HP, basic Pokemon. Ability, Jet Tugeza. Once during your turn. You may discard the water energy from your hand. If you do, your opponent switches their active Pokemon with one of their bench. So your opponent chooses. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Water uh, has only one attack. Water, water, water. Three water energies. Sauna bomb. Come on. Come up with the, with the amazing name that, you know, match the abilities name. All right. 100 damage. This attack does 20 damage to one of your opponent bench Pokemon. What do you think? Um, I would really like it if it wasn't a prism. D this, it, there is a lot of things that could have gone right for this card, like discard the water energy. You Guzma or you Elisander, maybe. Yeah. Um, it's just a what? Just two water energies for an attack. I don't know. There's a lot of things that could have gone better for this card. You know, more damage, for example, like the 130, yeah. 140. Prism. It, it. This is really. It's in general. Prism cards have not been as strong as they should be yes because you only have yeah they're not being treated like a specs in that because you can only have one their effects are just not very strong mm -hmm. um i'm i'm just sad that, that prism star should be treated better this card sucks <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like prisms, they got the amazing artwork, the amazing concept, but very, very, very bad card text. <laughs> There's nothing inside the card that makes it valuable to play, even worth playing. Like there's no good supporters. The good prism Pokemon are, you know, three maybe. Like the new Diane the Solgale Prism, the Lunala Prism, and that's about it. That that's yeah. it. It's just no. All right. Moving on. Oh my God! Why we don't get a good Arachnid? <laughs> Damn! I'm I'm so sad. It's now. This is the fifth or the sixth. Sun and Moon set and no good Arachnid. It's just it's just annoying. Oh god. And we got another um you know magnet circuit magnezone. We are friend. Uh, um we got the Zug uh, the uh, basic uh, Zugitri. Uh, <coughs> basic Pokemon 120 HP uh, first attack, Flash Bullet. For one Lightning Energy, it does 20 damage. Your opponent is now confused. This attack is amazing. 
So 20, 50 damage with choice band, your opponent confuse. Conf confusion is great for one energy. Uh, second attack, lightning, lightning colorless. 100 damage, if your opponent have three prize cards remaining, your opponent Pokemon is now paralyzed. This attack is insane. Like you combine this with the Negendal, it's just amazing. What do you think? I like it. I like, personally like it. Um, so on the uh, on Zerka Tree, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's okay. Um, the first attack is definitely solid, which uh, is something that we've seen. Uh, Espeon GX confusion to the active. For one, it's definitely a solid opener. Um, it might be... I just don't know what deck it would fit into. Because... Uh, yeah. So the unit energy... The unit energy that has lightning on it also has... Water and... No, not water. It's one that has psychic steel and uh, electric yes um you could play it in the naga natal deck yeah as a as like an opening pokemon to kind of like poke and and lock down an initial setup mm -hmm. maybe i think it's kind of low uh efficiency it's an interesting card i just don't think it fits anywhere right now mm-hmm mm -hmm. All right, all right, all right. Next one is uh, as the meow stick. Uh, stage one, ninety HP. Uh, <laughs> evolves from creepy cat from heck. <laughs> all right. First attack, teleport to break for one psychic twenty damage. Uh, switch this Pokemon with one of your benched. It's not great. Wish it, I wish it would have been confusion. Then this card will be, will be something else. Uh, next attack, one psychic, one colorless. Uh, 30 damage plus. This attack does 30 more damage for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. If the first attack would it's have... A Yep. If the first attack says confusion instead of the switch your bench, yeah, then that's something. But sadly, we don't we don't get the good cool things in life. Ah, oh, goddamn it, goddamn it, Pokemon Lab, why, why, why you like this? Why you like this? <laughs> All right, now. For the card, everybody who's waiting for Malamar, stage one, 90 HP with an insane ability. Once during your turn, you may attach one psychic energy from your discard pile to one of your benched Pokemon. More psychic support. This is the psychic set. Um. Oh yeah, this card, well, I mean, card's great i don't really know how you could say this card's bad um the i got the promo at the uh pre-release i got the staff promo mm -hmm. and it is it is glorious nice and uh it's a great card um I don't know if um, Ultra Necrozma is necessarily the best partner for it, mm -hmm. but there's no way for this ability to be bad. There will be a great partner partner for this Pokemon somehow, somewhere. I don't know. It's just amazing. All right. Moving on to my boy, Negendal. I like to call it Negendal. Call it what you call it. Neganado? I don't I don't like Neganado. Alright, Negandal, it's a stage one, two ten HP with a first attack. We already discussed it, but for the sake of this set analysis, we'll go for uh we'll go we will you know run through it quickly. 
first attack 20 damage this attack does 20 damage for each uh, uh, times each ultra beast you have in play so if you have yeah it, it can be it can do a lot of damage second attack jet tackle for one psychic devil colorless 110 damage it's not affected by resistances little bit over uh, underwhelming uh, GX attack which is insane uh, for three colorless Tinger GX each player shuffle their prizes into their deck then each player takes three cards for, from the top of their deck and put it in the prize zone face down Nugget Nadal what do you think? Uh, this card's sweet yes um Honestly, uh, when this set goes live, I'm going to be calling or I'm going to be messaging the trader, the card trader that I normally work with, and I'm going to get everything I need for this deck. Because <laughs> I've already got four full art buzz walls. Nice. And I'm, and I'm going to get some gold beast rings and four of these guys in full art, and it's going to be sweet. Nice, I'm really... Nice. This is the deck to invest in. Awesome, awesome. All right. All right. All right. We got ourselves the fighting Garchomp. We have the dragon. Now we have the fighting. So what? it's even better. Garchomp will get better with this set. Nice. It's good seeing Garchomp being better. All right. Also, we got the... Skip, skip, skip. Ah, we got the Zygar GX. Um... Uh, cell connector 50 damage attach two fighting energy from your discard pile to this Pokemon Land Wrath for two fighting two colorless 130 damage uh, Judgment GX 150 damage uh, During your opponent next turn this Pokemon takes no damage from the attacks of your opponent Pokemon GX and, and EX by the way there is a supporter that can make you attack, use the, this GX attack again and again. That's the thing about Zygarde GX. What do you think? I like it. It's 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 fun. Yeah, I, it's solid. Um, I do think one thing to point out mm -hmm. is the GX spamming strategy is not as effective as you may think. Yeah, because yeah. if Zyg if Zygarde goes to the bench, that effect is gone. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, but I think Zygarde as a Pokemon, combined with all of the other benefits that fighting Pokemon have right now, I think it's still good enough to see play because you can discard some energies early, setting up your board, attach a double colorless it automatically sets itself up for very little resource investment. I think it's just an all-around, just solid addition to the fighting toolbox deck. Yes, yes. That's what I like about it. It's it's it's, it's just self-managing type of Pokemon. All right, next, one of the best Prisms ever released, the Yansei Prism Star. 120 HP basic Pokemon with an ability and that's it you don't need anything other than that if this pokemon is on your bench your fighting pokemon does 20 more damage to your opponent active pokemon more stuff to just more tool to the to the insane fighting toolbox diane prism what do you think um so, on the one hand, yes, you're getting more damage out of your fighting Pokemon, but there's another aspect which is, I think, more important, mm -hmm. which is you get to save. You get to what? You get to save bench space with on your red. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, uh, it was lagging. You get to what? Something. Uh, you you save bench space. Oh, oh. all right. Bench space. Huh. This is two, yeah. This is two Regirocks in one card. Oh yeah, yeah. That's gonna Regirock only. Regirock EX only gives you ten damage, and it's an EX is a vulnerability. So yeah, problem solved. Yes. And it only gives one prize. Mm -hmm. So 
I think this gives you number one, it gives you a lot more burst damage. Um, you can get it to it much more easily, you know, off of, I mean, I know you're not playing cards like Bridget in the fighting toolbox, but one search off of your Brooklet Hill, you put the Diancy Prism star into play. You're less likely to have it in your opening hand and discard it. Um, it's great. Yes. It's just incredible. Yep. All right. All right. Next one is the is the baby or the basic buzzwall um, with an amazing uh, 130 HP. I like the 130 uh, with an amazing first attack that says for one fighting energy sledgehammer 30 damage plus if your opponent has four prize card remaining this attack does 90 more damage for so for just 30 for just uh, your opponent knocking out your for example a, a gx pokemon you can for one strong energy you can do 140 with diancy that's 160 with choice band that's 190 damage for one strong energy what do you think um they should really rename this card to be called the clapback because <laughs> you lose one gx and then you put up, you know, like a free retreat Pokemon. Now you drop this buzz wall, slap on a strong energy, and then knock out their Zoroark. Slap. You just just get out of here. Yeah, get out of here. It's amazing. Like, buzz wall GX can be very explosive. So just mm -hmm. put all your resources into that Zoro buzz wall GX. Do your shenanigans. Wait for a, your opponent to knock it out, then that guy comes in, all buffed up, and just KO your opponent with one strong energy. It's it's good. I like it. All right. Then we got Ultra Necrozma GX Photongeza for one. Psychic one metal, twenty damage plus. Discard all psychic energies from this Pokemon. This attack does eighty more damage for each energy discarded this way. So yeah, and we got the destructive light GX same energy cost. This can be used if there's six or less total prizes remaining in play. So yours and your opponent play six damage counters on each of your opponent Pokemon. Ultra Necrozma GX. What do you think? So, okay. So on the one hand, if you're playing Ultra Necrozma with Malamar, mm -hmm. you're getting, you put three Malamar in play. That means that every turn, if you go, if you bench it and then attach a metal and get uh, three energy in the discard, three psychics, that means every turn you can do 180 to 10 with a choice band. Which is pretty good. So if you go insane, like Max Elixir, Malamar, something like you go Ultra Necrozma GX Turbo. You, you could do that. Um, but then if you're knocking out everything, then you don't need its GX attack. Mm -hmm. So, I think it's good. But you need but the right wonder... deck for it. Yeah. It, it lacks the, chemis the chemistry. <laughs> I think, you know, I, I think there are people that are going to just put Alternate Necrozma and some Max Elixirs and Malamars mm. into a deck and think that they'll be okay, but that's not the case. That's not the case. There's a lot of things in the format that hit for 210. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And, and you're going to need to make sure that you have metal energies available to you that you can search them out of your deck 
which means you're running things like Professor's Letter, which is a very low value card. Mm -hmm. But Rayquaza Electric was such a good deck. And mm. this does exactly the same thing. Mm. Maybe, uh, so maybe. It's... Uh, yeah. It needs something else. A, just aggression is not good enough. It needs to be able to do something else. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Alright. Alright, moving on. Moving on to Neuvern. Basic Neuvern. Uh, so... Basic Neuvern, uh, stage one, uh, for... One colorless, twenty damage. The opponent Pokemon is uh, active. Pokemon is now confused. All right. Uh, second attack uh, for three colorless, seventy damage. If the defending Pokemon is confused, this attack does seventy more damage. What do you think? Uh, this is actually pretty cool. Um. Because you're already coming out, you're packing them with uh, confusion. Then the next turn, you attach double colorless, and you're doing another. Because uh, if you're assuming with a choice band, you're doing 50 first turn, hmm. then 170 after that. That's quite a bit of damage. All right, so I I'm thinking you can play Neuvern, SP on GX with the Zergatry. Yeah, and no, you yeah. can use the unit energy because it has lightning and psychic, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So yeah, that's maybe a thing. I don't know. So yeah, Neuvern Espion Zerkitri is the new meta. <laughs> all right, <laughs> all right. Confirmed. One of the one of the one of all right. Moving on to items, we got B string. One of the best cards in this set, I saw uh, almost every deck in Japan run, ran two or three of these. You may only play this card when your opponent th has three or four prizes. Search your deck for up to two basic energy, reveal them, attach them to one of your Ultra Beast Pokemon, shuffle your deck afterward. It has acquired the restriction. But the value you get out of it is insane. And don't forget, Negendal GX can fix the prizes. So you can do, sh you know, some Ultra Beast prize modification shenanigans, Beast String, Beast String, and just get an insane value out of this card. What do you think? Uh, it's sweet. It's like it's super good. I there's nothing else to say. The, the, you know, Max Elixir is really strong and has a chance to get you one energy. In an Ultra Beast deck, this is two Max Elixirs combined into one card that can't miss. It's insane. It's insane. it's crazy. It's it's people are gonna hate playing against this because you're gonna you're gonna get hit with this Nagandal GX attack, and then the next turn you're they're not gonna get a KO, and then they're gonna go double beast ring or triple beast ring, and you're gonna wanna you're gonna hate your life and you're gonna want to wanna hang yourself. <laughs> all right. All right. If if all right, all right guys. If the, if the next format is a tier 0 Ultra Beast format, I'm going to start streaming uh, Japanese Mahjong on the channel. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, moving on to uh, Bonnie. Bonnie? I, I don't remember her named Bonnie. Oh, wait. Is that the, the, um, the, the American name? The Japanese name is Eureka. All right, whatever. All right. Discard the stadium in play during... Uh, it's a supporter. During this turn, your Zygar GX may use its GX attack again. It's the card we were talking about, the combo with... Um, 
uh, with the Zygar GX and as Brian explained it's not as you know consistent or amazing as you think we already discussed it next card is Crusher Wake a supporter discard two water energy from your hand to play this card search your deck for up to two cards and put them into your hand shuffle your deck afterwards what do you think about Wake? Um, I actually, I actually like this card. Mm -hmm. Because, bare minimum, this card says, disc, it says, play a supporter, get two energy into play. Because even worst case scenario, where you don't have great targets to search, you can go get two aqua patches. And you got, yeah, it's like you searched for free. Yep. Yeah. You then you got it's it's a deck thinning, so, energy on board. It's just amazing. Yes. Your deck, I think this is going to be your premium supporter. In fact, you might even play three of them mm. in a in a dedicated water deck. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Awesome. All right. Next one is Diantha. Uh you can only play this card if one of your fairy Pokemon was knocked out last turn. Uh, choose two cards from your discard pile and put it into your hand. We have been testing this card. It's yielding very good results. Deantha, what do you think? Um, this is the kind of card that I'm really glad that um, Rainbow Road is not in the format right now. Because <laughs> this would be absolutely crazy with that deck yes yes um i don't know if this is better than puzzle of time um it's a supporter so it's not better but the thing is this is staying puzzle of time going but, right but um keep, um keep in mind it's 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 almost may and it's three months till we get the rot the new rotation and everything, every breakpoint card bye bye. No more max elixirs, no more puzzle of times. Yeah. So it's almost almost That's time. Fair. Almost time. Yeah. Um. I mean, I like it. I I I hope there is a deck that can take advantage of it. I especially the newer supporter design. I am enjoying more. Um, yeah, they're designs they're are less really, really great. Good. Yeah. Um, but sadly, we still don't have Sycamore and replacement yet. Mm -hmm. For next set, may we have them? I don't know. All right, next. Uh, one of the cards I'm mo I am personally most excited about is Fossil Excavation Map. Excavation... Ex excavate... Ah! Fossil card. It's a fossil map. Search your deck <laughs> or discard pile. This is, this is the keyword here. Search your deck or discard pile for one unidentified un un fossil card which is the <laughs> item that, that is like a robo substitute for um, uh, fossils. Show it to your opponent, and if, uh, uh, and, if, and if you search your deck, shuffle your deck afterward. This card is amazing. This card is never, ever dead. So you either search your mm -hmm. deck or your discard pile. You'll get an insane value out of this. You play four an, an unidentified fossil, and you play four of this, and you get insane things. The problem with fossils, um, and I, you cannot find an, an unidentified fossil. You cannot find it. It's an amazing card that makes you, mm -hmm. you know, evolve. It works with rare candy to skip you know, to stage two immediately. But the problem, you cannot find it. You just have four of it. And if you one or two go, go prized, you're, you're dead. There is no comeback from this. So this fossil map, it's, I like it. What do you think? Fossils, Master Race. This, 
This is the first good fossil card that they printed since Twist Mountain. <laughs> and yes, yes, this is Twist amazingly Mount good. Twist Mountain was like five years ago. <laughs> it took them five years. It took them five years. <laughs> Dude, search your deck or discard pile. Like at last, someone spoke. Like, like you need, you need, you know, God type of messenger that comes to Pokemon Company. <laughs> like, make a good fossil card, please. Like, like I'm. I'm it's so great, it doesn't say, look at the bottom seven cards of your deck. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so tired of those, I hate those cards. Yeah, this gimmick is, 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 I hate it, but this card is good. All right, moving on, enough fanboying. We got the reprint of Judge, that's good. We got a lady that says, supporter, search your deck for up to four basic energies. Put them into your hand, shuffle your deck afterwards. What do you think about this supporter? Works with the new Magnezone, I think. Uh, I guess. Um, it was a heated debate in our group. So somebody says it's good, somebody says bad. I rather play Fisherman. I rather play, you know, Matt and Cornet. What whatsoever, instead of this card. But I think it's nice for especially the metal decks. You can play this card, and you have four. It's it's amazing with my one of my favorite decks, Duck Trio. Imagine. Oh, you do, yes. Yeah. You you four energies that's one twenty damage. You 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 slap in your opponent's face. Uh, that's the only deck that this could be good in. <laughs> yes, dude. I've uh, uh, I've been playing Duck Trio since last month. This deck is insane. It's so much fun to play. It's just, you know, the thrill of digging inside your deck for that one energy you need to KO your opponent with. It's just, the thrill is insane. It's just, <laughs> it gave me what I was missing. <laughs> All right. We got Lysander Prism Star. Um... For each of your uh, fire Pokemon play, put the same number of cards from your opponent discard pile into their last zone. And what is that? What is that? What? What? What this card supposed to do? Uh, I guess it's to prevent. Vikabulu players from playing Energy Recycler or to puzzle targets. I don't know. This card is bad. The, no, it, it's garbage. It, 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 this is not Yu-Gi-Oh. We, <laughs> we have very little discard pile interaction in this game. So uh, making a Lysander Prism start for this sole purpose is bad. What what they were thinking? God damn it! All right, next one is a uh, Lysander Labs. It's a, it's a stadium it says, that says Pokemon tools in play has no have no effect. So no choice band, no float stones whatsoever. I like this card. It has you know it will have some um, some nice applications. Rogue decks, cancer decks that can utilize this. What do you think? Um, it's it's definitely a niche card, mm -hmm. but with so much choice band in the format, um, taking choice band out of play is definitely um, significant. Uh, the problem is the con the combination of choice band and field blower. I think tools are already balanced enough that I, I don't know if you're, there's going to be a time where you really need to play this. Fair. And for example, it doesn't counter, it doesn't counter Garbodor mm -hmm. because the tool is still attached. Huh? Oh it, yeah. Makes sense. So at most this counters Floatstone, but Floatstone's going to rotate soon. 
It's like anti a skateboard. <laughs> no, okay. <please> <laughs> uh, it perfectly counters the frying pan. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. The, the, no, now it's good. Now this card is insanely good. Yes. <laughs> Play four in every deck, please, guys. All right. Next one is the continue of the psychic supports. We got we got the amazing Negendal, we got the amazing Malamar, and we got the most amazing card in this set, Mysterious Treasure. Discard the card from your hand in order to it's an it's an item. Discard the card, search your deck for a psychic or a dragon, reveal it, shuffle your deck afterward. You can search for Tapu Lele, you can play four Ultra Ball, four Mysterious Treasure in a Psychic deck. It's amazing. It's consistency. It's no more Espeon Garbador breaking. It's amazing. What do you think? Uh, this card's insane. <laughs> you can search Ultra for Ball. Yeah. Like, Ultra Ball's already good. Let's just make a better, like, you know, you cut out a lot of the types that you, you know, you can't search for, but then, you know, not have to discard an extra card. It's disgusting. It's crazy. <laughs> Dude, it, card's super good. It's, it's the only time in, in, in this, you know, in, 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 a, in an era of two years format, I will say to someone, you can play a less than four count of Ultra Ball. <laughs> it's the only time. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you see deck uh, deck decks in Japan that plays four of this, you know, and one or two ultra balls. You know, the techs, the spicy tech of ultra ball. <laughs> you know, psychic decks like, utilize this. You yeah. get the maximum value out of it. Like Tapu Lele, Garbodor, Malamar, Espeon. Uh, it's it's insane. It's insane. Any deck can run it no problem because of Tapu Lele. <laughs> Yeah, you can play running... with one and still get some value. You can play uh, actually. You can play one, and you you can if you're Zoroark and you can search your Tapu Lele, your Mew, your Mewtwo, whatsoever. It's it's amazing. Yeah, this it's so good, so good. Like I don't know. Let's just not spend more time praising this card. <laughs> yeah, then we'll start a cult worshipping this symbol. Well, what? Yeah, maybe. Then we got the amazing beast energy. Uh, this card provides colorless energy. While this card is attached to an ultra beast, it, it provides every type of energy, uh, but provides uh, only one energy at a time. The attack of the attacks of Ultra Beast this card is attached to does 30 more damage to your opponent active Pokemon. It's a star, Prism Star. What do you think? Beast Energy. Um if there's ever at any point a card printed that gets things back from the lost zone, this card becomes completely busted. Mm-hmm. Um but because we can't recover things from the Lost Zone, it's okay. It's about as good as Super Boost. Mm -hmm. In the decks that can play it will, but never expect for it to actually be useful. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Awesome. All right, we got our last card, which is the Fairy Fighting Dark Unit Energy. What do you think? Uh, I guess it's good for Gardevoir Zoroark. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We, now we got three unit energies. We got the water, fire, uh, grass, and we got the electric, steel, psychic, and we got this, the firing, dark, and fairy. So, uh, a lot of room for creativity in, in mm -hmm. these decks. So, yeah. Like, I really want the unit energies to be good. Mm -hmm. awesome. I just don't know how they're going to be good. All right. 
Alright, awesome, awesome, awesome. My friend Brian Strakel, any advice, any last words you give our audience? Um, normally I, I like to say, I like to talk about things like practice and keeping an open mind. And, and those are things to, to, you know, always strive towards. But I think one thing to think about today is always, even in just outside of Pokemon, try to gain as much as you can out of losing. And try to make sure that your mentality behind a loss is that, yes, you, you, you didn't win and winning's great, but all it means is that you are one step closer. You have one more piece of information that will get you the win next time. So don't make excuses when you lose. Instead, analyze the game, see what you can do better, and be a better player. And it, it extends to life as well. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for this amazing advice. Thank you for everybody who watched, who watched till this point. Thank you, Brian, my friend, for being here for this um, 11th episode yes <laughs> next one is our anniversary <laughs> All right. one year next month will be one year of an hour with senpai non-stop we'll try we'll try our best to do something special we'll try no promises guys but we will try <laughs> to do something special no one gonna propose to anyone <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for everything. Thank you for sticking by my side till this point. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I don't know what to say. I'm full of emotions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. All right, guys. That was. Brian Stark Stroker and Dark Rai Q8 and that was an hour with Senpai Dark Rai Q8 signing out. <laughs>